Hello everyone, welcome to the 14th episode now of Three Guys in the Bible. Um, it's been an interesting week for all of us. I know for me personally, I got done um, with my normal weekly tasks on Wednesday morning. Wow. That, that's mm, pretty good. That's unheard of. You for are a go-getter. Uh, well, I'd like to be more than that but but hey it's it's been good uh i don't know about you guys i've we've been battling illness in in my house uh, corey has been sick for about a week kristen's been, been sick since saturday uh i'm i'm tired of i'm not sick but everyone else around me but being it's not sick, fun it's, and the family's all it's sick, not you know? it, i feel so bad for them there's nothing you can do headaches and just achy and uh people's kids sick I've talked to the people's kids. School just started. Everybody can't be sick already. That's not. <laughs> That's how it happens. School is just a one petri kid dish. It in. Yeah, it one is a petri kid. Dish. Oh, that yeah. kid. I'm surprised you didn't bring something back from your your vacation. From yeah. The, no. The, nope. Um, came healthy as a horse. We've been healthy we've been nice horse. and healthy in my uh, in <laughs> my household. Down that path. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what healthy as a horse means, no. but uh, I guess I am. Yep. Uh, you can't argue with something that's been said for centuries, yeah. probably. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. having just had a birthday, we haven't even put you out to pasture yet. So no. That's good. That's good. I, I just passed her here. It's that, yeah. oh, oh, play on words. Too yeah. much. Yeah. Too much know. this early. Okay. <laughs> All right. Might be. It might be. Uh, hey, we want to thank you guys uh, for for tuning in and listening. Um, each week it seems to grow just a little bit. Somebody out there is helping us share this, liking it. Um, reposting it for us. That, that's the only way something like this could ever spread. Um, we're not a big nationally syndicated thing. We don't have any sponsors behind us yet. yet. I like almost that was almost in unison. <laughs> well done, well done. Um, but we would love to. Uh, we would love to to have some some sponsorship behind us. We can help promote your business as a, a fellow believer, and and you can help promote uh, the things that God's sharing through us. To uh, your your customers, um, you know, even in in your place of employment, if you'd like, it would be awesome to share it that way. Who knows what, what God's going to do with this? Uh, all we know is that we're having fun doing it, and uh, we appreciate you guys being a part of it with us. Um, last week, we actually behind the scenes began a discussion that we wanted to put off until this week um, because it related to the the topic of this past Sunday morning at at our church, and so. Um, I'm just going to begin by, by reading a passage. Uh, might sound familiar to some of you uh, if you've been in the church for a while. If you're not, if you're kind of new to faith, then uh, you would have no reason to have probably ever heard this verse yet. And so um, I want to share it with you, and then we'll just kind of get into the, the behind the scenes of it and you know, kind of what, what it should mean for us as believers today. Uh, also keep in mind that as with most scriptures like this, it only applies to true believers, followers of Jesus. Um, this is not for everyone. And so um, that's a truth that we can cling to as believers, but uh, it is not something that we can just pass out arbitrarily to any old person struggling, going through difficult times uh, or anything like this. It comes from the book of Philippians, chapter four, verse six is when it, where it begins. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And I know we had a, a, some really good discussions in our, our CD group on Monday night about this topic, the topic of worry, of anxiety, uh, fear even, could, could kind of be categorized in this same, same grouping. Um, Man, it seems like everybody, everybody is uptight. Everybody's a little anxious. Everybody's fearful, worried about something. Um, why? why? Why is that the case in the world we live in? Everybody just seems to be, be on edge in this department. Well, are you alive? Well, um, I, nobody's told me different yet. Today. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, like uh, there's reasons for people in the world to be worried. Like what? <laughs> Like, even going down the street, even in Brazil, there's stuff to be worried about. And, I mean, uh, the election coming up, people worried about that. Um, Nuclear war? What? Oh, wait, that's back on the table again. It seems like being a child of the 80s, I know, Ken, you're a little bit older than the 80s, but yep. you grew up through that. You didn't know the 80s existed, um, David, yep. but 
Uh, <laughs> the, music, so, the music was good. The music was good. Um, so you've actually grown up in a time where <coughs> nuclear war wasn't even a real thing. Like, nobody even talked about that. Whereas it was behind the scenes when I was a kid, but Reagan and, and Gorbachev were doing their thing and, and discussing things. And um, Ken, did you have to hide under desks? Uh, I, I don't remember doing that. Yeah. It's it's kind of in the back of my mind. They yeah. still did that with with us actually, like like really, which is insane. Yeah, for 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 bombs for yeah. bombs really. Yeah. Huh. Interesting. They didn't yeah. they didn't even do that for us. We I, I never understood how a desk would protect you from yeah. anything from or tornadoes bomb? to nuclear bombs, but maybe those desks are made of something <laughs> special. I don't I don't know. Um, yeah. they, nuclear yeah. war is not something to laugh at. That's not what we're doing. Just absolutely not. Just our uh, just our, some of the. Recommendations the, that we, our guidelines we've been given. Some on of how the to preparations ourselves. I don't think would prepare us real well. <laughs> I don't. For that. I don't think either. Yeah, no. that war thing. Um, you know, wars and rumors of wars that Scripture talks about as, as we enter toward the end times. Well, again, we've said this before, but the end times began when Jesus returned. When Jesus came the first time, mm-hmm. uh, that that's when the end times started. So absolutely, we are in the end times as proclaimed by Jesus Himself. Um, but. Yeah, all, all of these things, you know, things going on in, in Israel, things, the war going on in, in Europe, uh, threats of war from, from other countries, lots of stuff there. The economy, um, big yeah. worry in our oh, country. Yeah. I was going to say, I think financial yeah. stability, I think that is everybody's pretty much their number one concern is financial stability. Am I going to have enough to support my family? And then once my family's gone yeah. and I'm old, am I going to have enough to support me? Yeah. After supporting my family all these years, working all these years, is, is is there going to be anything for me in the in the last days? Or if how know? things are going, um, is money going to mean anything yeah. well, by, the, yeah. time, by yeah. the time I retire? Yeah. yeah, that's true. Inflation has definitely taken a toll yeah. on, on those kinds of things. And so, yeah, an infinite list of reasons for, for people to be worried and, and distracted. And if there's not something, we'll make something up that's to worry about. Right. That's yeah. right. If there's not something truly real, <laughs> tangible to be worried or, or be anxious about, um, then we'll, we'll just create something of our own we'll we'll get on our social media and we will find something on there as we're scrolling to to fear or to worry about yeah (laughs) yeah well i mean even even our bible say we had on tuesday we were at forest park when there was all sorts of people there and we're just letting our kids play over there we're watching it from a distance but there was a certain amount of like well we gotta be watch on guard because yeah. this world is not safe. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's not the same as it used to be. No, we I mean, talked about yeah. that too. Yeah, you, you, my mom would have let me go and play at the park by myself without yeah. her anywhere but, nearby. <laughs> you know, but there is danger. Yeah. yeah, like yeah. Yeah, I hate to be the the guy to say this, but uh, yeah, I I left home in the morning and went and rode bikes, went fishing, uh, played at the neighbor kids, and you know came home at dinner time. Because I knew I had to be home at dinner, and and uh, my mom probably had no idea how far I traveled on my bicycle or or by foot that day. And then when I got a little bit older, I I started cutting grass in the neighborhood just for a way to earn extra money. And you know I I pushed my lawnmower all over town, and uh, you know I I couldn't my mom couldn't reach out on the old cell phone and and call me because well we didn't have those back then. No, no. I actually had pay phones. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and you didn't have a, what, and, a nickel probably then. Uh, oh, prob- probably, probably, nickel. maybe a dime, a maybe dime. a dime. It was yeah. quarter when I was a kid. Yeah. But uh, we still had I, a payphone at our high school. I think in the town I grew up in, uh, we had two pay fo- payphones. Uh, one was at the city market, which was, and, and then one was probably at the gas station, which both of those were basically in the same area. So yeah, and had a yeah. real big, yeah. big, big, big giant yeah. community. Yeah. Um, so Paul is the author of these words, um, and, and as I mentioned to, to folks on Sunday, I don't want to compare what Paul did, what Paul went through, you know, to the things that we are anxious about, the things that we are worried about as parents, as husbands, as, as uh, family members, co-workers, you know, just members of our, our society. So I, I don't want to get into a comparison battle between what he was doing and, and going through and what we do, but... Uh, it is very important, if you're not familiar with Paul and his words, to understand how and, and where he was writing them. Um, that book of Philippians is an a cr- incredible letter to the church of Philippi. It's very, very short. Um, it's only four chapters long. wouldn't take you 15 minutes to read on any given day. And this is toward the end of that chapter. And Paul's writing this from a prison 
in Rome. Uh, we don't know the exact date for sure, but it, he was in prison and he would never get out again. Uh, the next time he was released from prison was when he was relieved of his life. And so um, he was in, in prison thinking about all the churches he planted, the people that he loved and cared about, the, the pastors that he had mentored, the elders that he had, had planted, and, and he wanted to encourage them. He wanted to write letters, passionate letters to them, letting them know, hey, this is how you can survive this world. This is who you are to be in Christ Jesus. And so um, he's writing an example for them. He's, he's literally a physical, living, breathing example of how you can be in the worst possible situation in your entire life on death row for a crime you did not commit and still not be anxious about anything. Not worry about your life. Don't worry about those, those that you don't have to think about those things because if you offer everything up to Jesus, he'll take care of you. He'll provide the peace that you need in your life to make it through those those specific times. And so uh, we got to understand that it's not just some rich pastor living in a, a, a palace uh, writing the, the peasant um, followers of Jesus. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's not who Paul was. Yeah. All right. Um, so this verse then, um, we, we like to take it out of context and just tell people, hey, just don't worry about it. This says right here, don't be anxious. Don't worry about anything. But that's not all it says. There's more to that formula than just, hey, don't be anxious. Don't worry. That's probably why it doesn't always work with people because they just, well, I should just not worry. I should just not worry. And that ends the conversation. Well, it doesn't. No. No. Something's got to change because if if you're worrying about something and you're like, well, I just will stop worrying about it, that thought doesn't go away. (laughs) It's got to be kicked out. Um, And that's what Paul gives us is a formula for replacing the thought. he didn't say you're not going to worry. He didn't say there wasn't worrying things to worry about. Of course there were things to be anxious and worry about in his day, just like ours. But we're asked to not dwell on those. Um, Jesus is the one that said, you know, who by worrying will add a, a single hour to their life. Well, yeah, that was true 2,000 years ago. Um, still going to be true today. So how how can we do that? How do we battle that in our lives? I mean, we all worry about things too. I think semantics comes into play quite a bit, you know, when we say, well, I'm not worried about it, but we still should be concerned. You know, there's there's things that have happened, you know, in my life over the past six months to a year that um, that are concerning, that has caused me to put a lot of thought into how am I going to deal with it, but I can't say that I'm truly worried about it. I know that God is going to, to hopefully be glorified in, in every situation. Yeah, it, it it really sinks some of them, um, but in the end, I know that my response to those is going to be either what brings shame or glory to God, and um, you know I've shared it with some of my closest closest friends as to what we're going through, and and uh, but I just know that God is a faithful God, and that I you know I'm still living in a, in a nice home. I'm still driving a nice vehicle and I, I still have food on my table and and you know when we look to where where Paul was when he was writing that the studies I've shown is that you know they it, it wasn't like the uh, uh, correctional facilities Not of like today, today where they no. bring around Probably. the food cart and, yeah. and you uh, you choose whatever you're going to eat what I've said he says that they didn't even provide them food so if you didn't have a close personal friend or family bringing you food um yeah, pretty much you didn't eat Might not be and that <clears throat> i guess that helped clear out clear out the the jail cells after yeah. a while but yeah. uh you know when we look at at all the blessings god gives us so many that are that are you know totally undeserved and we just think uh, you know i can't i can't i can't be worried about whether god's going to provide because i know that he will yeah this is the faith we we we, we have i mean god's brought us through so much already why wouldn't he continue to be faithful? Yeah. As, I mean, God's called us, us three at least, um, to be spiritual leaders within a, a community of faith. And so, uh, like it or not, people look to us. And so how we handle issues, how we handle things happening in society, uh, whether they sense <laughs> that worry or anxiety or fear on our in our lives, um, will go a long way toward mm-hmm. them realizing how they should respond, but you don't have to be a, a leader, quote unquote, to do that. Um, within your families, how you handle 
those situations, even even crisis that that might come might arise within your family, how you handle that at work uh, with your coworkers, you know, if you're a business owner and, and how you handle adverse situations with worry or anxiety, where then your employees have that same fear and worry and anxiety. Um, there's a, a lot of a lot of peace that can be brought to other people when you you demonstrate um, the way you you can overcome that as believers through Christ, and so. Paul gives us a very specific example. If, if you weren't with us on Sunday, it, it, it's really simple. He, he tells us to start everything by rejoicing. Um, even when we're worried, even when we're afraid, even when we're anxious about whatever is about to happen, um, to start with praise. Why do you suppose he suggests that? It just reminds us of how, how good we do have it, the good things that God's provided for us. It helps us. Yeah, that changes our mind already to a certain extent, just remembering the blessings that he's poured out i think yeah it 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 changes your position immediately um you might still be anxious a little bit might still be worried but you know there's something greater than you and you're acknowledging that reality around you um so absolutely so so he starts with that um then he then the next thing he suggests is to say hey okay start with praising god and then make sure that everyone around you can see the spirit of God within you. Make sure that that is what's on display. His specific words are a, a gentle spirit or gentleness. Um, but you get into the word study and you realize he, he's talking about the fruit of the spirit. He's talking about the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of you needs to be on display for everybody around you to see. So they aren't seeing any anxiety or fear within you because that's not what controls us as believers. Not that they won't have the thought, Or be anxious, but that's just not what is in control of us. The Spirit of God is in control of us. And so then you get to the the, the, the verse that we started with, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, with thanksgiving, through prayer. So he's adding another layer here. (coughs) We don't just, God, I'm so worried about this. God, can you just help me with this? I'm afraid of this. I'm anxious about these things. Um, He tells us we've got to go to God with a very specific attitude Mm -hmm. toward those things. Does that mean we're thankful for that thing that's worrying us? Is that what he's saying? I, 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 I'm not usually thankful mm. when I'm going through those times. No? No. Not no. thankful when you go no. to your yearly yeah. doctor's exam? Man. I, waiting I, for bad news? You're not just, yeah. I mean, I, I mean no? probably one of my favorite vehicles. Out of all the vehicles I've owned, one of my favorite ones uh, went down. and I, could, I, I can't say I was thankful <laughs> as I was sitting alongside the road. Uh, <laughs> Waiting for someone to come pick me up. Thankful for this opportunity. Pretty far from thankful at that point, probably. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thankful this truck broke down. Yeah. And was actually ended up being irreparable. Irreparable? Irreparable? That's an awful big word. It couldn't be repaired. It was broke, 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 broke. Yeah. Yeah. It was broken. And so uh, I I wasn't real happy about that truck never coming back to my garage. No. But I, I am thankful that God gave me the provisions. Um, you know, through obedience and, and, and determination to to take care of the financial responsibilities there and, and just move on. But no, I wasn't thankful at that point. Yeah. And even then, though, there were a ton of things, even as you sat along the side of the road to be thankful for, somebody was going to come get you. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you had a way home still. Yeah. Uh, how many people in places don't yeah. when that happens to them? Um, you know, it wasn't the end of the world, if you will, for yeah. you, whereas in some cultures and some even people within our community, yeah, that's their livelihood. They yeah. might not be able to get to work now. They might. I mean, there's a yeah. whole laundry list of things. Of, and so, really, I, Paul's talking about it, just an attitude here, of hey, go to God, but go to God with the appreciation of who God is. Thankful for who, not for the situation, um, you know, but be thankful for who He is. You know, He's going to provide in some way. He's going to answer this prayer. And and then he he continues on beyond that, and he lets us know that when we do this. When we're faithful in this way, that God provides his peace, and his peace has a very specific job. His peace guards our hearts and minds. Uh, We don't guard and protect our hearts and minds. Nothing we could do to prevent worry and anxiety and things like that from coming in. We physically can't do it, Um, but he can through the peace that he leaves us through his spirit. Um, And that's what people miss out on a lot of times. We, We try to take care of the worry, solve the problem, you know, whatever, and we don't allow God's peace to to fully cover our hearts and minds. Then he follows that with a list. And the list is a very specific one. 
All right, so here's the thing, folks. I, I know you're going to worry. I know you're going to be anxious. So here's what you need to do. Quit dwelling on those things. Quit thinking about it. But he doesn't just do that it, it, like Paul always does. He tells us the problem. He tells us, you know, we need to fix it. And then he tells us how, how to fix it. And that's literally what he does here is he gives us this list at the end of this, this part of the chapter of what we are supposed to to dwell and think on. And he says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, noble, right, pure, whatever is admirable, lovely, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. As when you're talking with people that are anxious or worried and they start telling you everything they're anxious and worried about, how do we flip it? Flip it. <laughs> so they can stop dwelling on that. Yeah. How do we do that? How, how can we help people get to that point? Hmm. I think you, I usually let people vent for a little bit sure. when they come into the office. You know, go ahead, go ahead, and just spill all your beans. Let's get them all out here on the table. Then let's take a look at them. And then I do, I do try to try to point them more towards the positive of this. Of yeah, it, it really stinks you're going through this. However, let let's let's really focus on where where God has blessed you. This is a, this is a small hiccup. And, and I, I read somewhere, it's very popular, but you know, instead of asking, why am I going through this? Ask what, you know, God, what are you trying to teach me through this? And then lo and behold, you're, you're going to bump into somebody else going through a very similar problem. And then guess what? You've got a little bit of experience, not by choice, but you've got a little bit of experience where you can say, Hey, you know what? I've been through something real similar, and and you're right, man. When I was going through it, it was bad. Mm. But look at what God's doing with me now. That happened with me whenever I first came back to Christ. I, someone in, in, in the church was just his, sharing his testimony of, of what God brought him through, and some of the things that he went through <laughs> was similar, and it really did touch my heart quite a bit. Yeah. And, and that's why we we would stress that a lot here, just the, the power of the, of the testimony of Christ through you and so important amen, amen. absolutely uh, and it, that's actually what we're, part of what we're talking about this next week in, at church but the that idea of, of of talking with some letting them talk yes and, and talking with them encouraging them trying to help them find the positives in a situation again don't want to belittle anyone's situation um, you might be going through something horrific right now I'm not, not trying to make light of that in any way um, and, and I think there's a different kind of care for people that are going through those traumatic situations right now, whatever those might be, versus people that just have that general anxiety, just generally worried, negative about everything. I, I don't think those are the same conversation, you know, that you have with people, but the principles are the same for both groups. And so what I would do, especially as, as a student minister, for example, um, in youth ministry, you, you get to talk to that kid that's, you know, not depressed yet, but there's more and more teenagers falling into that category but you find okay this is what you're dealing with this is this is your struggle why why are you struggling with this and you begin to dive in you're like oh this is what you do all day oh you're listening to this all day oh you're reading this all day oh you're now you're constantly filling your mind and heart with all of this negativity with honestly in a lot of cases absolute evil and now you're worried and you're depressed and you have all this anxiety about things around you. Do you think maybe there's a correlation between those yeah. things? And adults do the same thing. Oh, yeah. Um, scrolling on Facebook, reading about how great everyone else has it possibly. The, so, they call it doom scrolling. They, they do. It they, is. It, yeah. It's a real thing. Um, yeah. It, it is not a coincidence that depression and anxiety and all these things are on a huge uptick right now. Right alongside things like the social media world that didn't exist yeah. prior. Um, those are absolutely correlated. And so whatever is good, whatever is pure, whatever, I mean, it, it's a really easy test as you're reading or listening or watching things. What is it? Is it good? Is it noble? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it admirable? Is there any redeeming quality whatsoever? No? Okay. Turn it off. Yeah. Quit reading. It, it's messing with your mind, you know? Um, we like to think that we can keep that evil out, but... We're not that powerful. Um, we're opening the door. We're inviting it in. And uh, unfortunately, it can take over without us even knowing it.
and that's that's hard. That's hard to overcome with people. The the study guide for this week actually came with a, a sheet um, that is a a 24 hour chart for every day of the week to write down exactly what media you consume every hour of the day, like to just jot it down throughout the day, each day for a week, so you can see. Um, what it is you're observing, what it is you're intaking, if you will. Someone, uh, a couple of ladies in our group on Monday night brought up the old, uh, old <laughs> adage, garbage in, garbage out. Um, yeah, so that, true. It wasn't yeah. just a computer terminology back in the day when computers <laughs> were being invented, but it, it was. Yeah. I remember that with that. Yeah. That's the first place I ever heard it. Um, uh, our bodies are the same way with food, um, but it, it has to do with the media and, and the information that we consume. If we're just constantly filling ourselves with this negative stuff, it's going to take a toll. It's going to take a toll, um, and I and I don't want to you know I mentioned that different categories of of people going through struggles and stuff in life. We never want to leave out that reality that uh, anxiety is real. Um, it can absolutely be a, a mental health issue, depression, real, um, and uh, Jesus wants to help you through those things. And His words in, in places like Philippians chapter four can and will help. But there might be additional help needed as well. Mm-hmm. And he can use any means. He can use a, a therapist. Uh, he can use your, your local family physician and, and a, a combination of medication and therapy and, and the Word of God, uh, the Spirit of God within you to heal you. Um, so don't be ashamed or afraid to pursue those things. Uh, there was a, a stigma for way too long for too many of those things. And, and people are in real need of help. Um, what we would say from a spiritual point of view is all the help in the world won't fix you without Jesus as well. Yeah. It's got to be a com- combination of mm-hmm. things. Um, Jesus can use those tools to help you, um, but he still has to be the center, the focus of that for us to pull completely through it. Uh, so don't don't miss that. Don't miss that. Uh, guys, other parting thoughts, fear, anxiety, worry? I think, I think the main thing when, when you're when you're – Listening to people that are struggling through a situation, never minimize that. Mm-mm, no, because what might be huge to them might not even not, might not even register with me. Yeah, or what might be with big with me, they would have no concern about. Yep. You know, if somebody's struggling with something, they're struggling with something, and and that's real. Even if it's even if it's even if it's not the way they're seeing it. Yeah. is absolutely 100% yeah. real to them. And so that's where, you know, good Christian counseling can help you out with that. And, and and that can be, you know, a fellow church member. You know, I always say, go to the best Christian that you know and just seek their help, seek their guidance, seek their friendship. And so never minimize what somebody's going through. Just realize that, you know, no change will ever come about without Jesus Christ at the center of that. Absolutely. Good thought. Good thought. Dave? Hmm? Yeah? Really. Yeah? Uh, music's great therapy. It is. It is. It is. Uh, it, it can literally, I think that's one of the many reasons why God gave it to us. Uh, yep. It is very therapeutic. Um, not only for praise and honor for Him, and when you combine the two, music with worship and praise, yeah. we're, we're really combining... Uh, what, what Paul's asking us to do. We're filling our minds and our hearts with what is good, right, pure, lovely. We are praising him. We're being thankful to him, uh, which is going to invite that peace directly in. So wouldn't be surprised if those are directly related. We'll find out when we get to heaven. He'll reveal all those those secrets to us. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, keep sharing with, with everybody. You know we appreciate it. Um, we're just three guys in the Bible. Thank you guys. <laughs>